So when we're talking about vectors of force, uh, we need to talk about units, right? So a lot of times you guys might be familiar with uh, like the, a pound rating. Oh, that's a 5,000 pound rope, or that rope is good for 5,000 pounds. That is not just, um, we use that kind of as a proxy because you and I, we understand pounds. Like I weigh 170 pounds. And what that is, that is a measurement of the force my body is exerting in a downward direction on the scale as I stand on it, right? My body is creating a force vector in the downward direction because of gravity, and that is equal to 170 pounds. So pounds is one of the units we use for force, but it's actually, when referring to torque, uh, it's, it's pound feet. So because torque is not just uh, how much force and the direction, it's how much force and direction relative the pivot point. So like we talked about over, on the, over here on our little demo branch, depending on the angle I am exerting that force on the branch, I, I change how much torque is on that branch. So pound, the, the units of torque involve more, uh, involve a, a different unit. We'll try that again one more time here. So the metric units for force are Newtons. So uh, if you, generally that's measured with like a spring, right? So if I pull on a spring and I can deflect it a certain amount, that indicates you know, the, the, hard, the more I deflect the spring, the longer I stretch it, then the more force I'm exerting. And that is essentially a direct correlation of Newtons. It's not associated necessarily with any particular direction. Uh, these, all of our little carabiners are rated to 25, well, this one's rated to 25 kilonewtons. At a minimum, ANSI requires you to have like 23 and a half kilonewtons, which is roughly 5,400 pounds of force as a conversion. But again, it's, uh, pounds is a measurement of weight, but weight is a force associated with gravity. So Newtons is just talking about force. You can have Newtons, gravity, not gravity, whatever, but it's metric, and that's how, that's the more scientific term. All of our carabiners, you'll see Newtons, kilonewtons, uh, and that's why they're using that, is because it's a little more of a precise measurement. But for whatever reason, people understand pounds better, especially out here in the US, where we're not too into the metric stuff. Kill that. I'm gonna try, so we're just gonna dive right in here. So I already mentioned we're gonna talk about vectors. Now, what is a vector? So a vector is a force in a direction. Now, that's important to note because force by itself is not all that useful of a term. If you imagine like a spring being stretched out, right? I'm not doing any useful work, but I am applying a force, and you can measure that force by how much the spring stretches. But again, it's not terribly useful for what we're talking about, so a vector is a more useful term. It refers to a force in a direction. If I push on something, I am pushing it in a direction. I'm applying a force in a direction, attempting to do work. Now, with what we're talking about here, when we're dealing with trees, and we're dealing with limbs, especially with canopy anchors, what I'm most concerned about is actually torque. Now, torque is force in a direction relative to a pivot point. So I'll give a little bit of an example here. Here we have a super simplified tree branch uh, system, right? And there's lots of ways I could apply force to this branch, right? I can stand on it, like a little guy here, right? And his weight is applying force in a downwards direction on that branch. Now that would be considered a torque because here is a pivot point. So I have a vector of force equal to the weight of the man on the end of this branch relative this pivot point. So if I were to then, let's just say, oh, this is, uh, if I want to reduce the torque, then I can either reduce his weight, I can make him lighter, I can reduce the force of the vector, or I can move the position of that vector relative to the pivot point. And you guys kind of have an intuitive understanding of this, right? So if the guy is now standing right here, and he's, he hasn't changed weight, right? He's still the same weight. The force vector that he's exerting on that branch is still the same, but the torque on the branch is gonna be a lot less because he's closer to the pivot point. He has less leverage. So most of the optimizing of canopy anchors that we're dealing with, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to limit the torque on any of the branches that I'm interacting with. So to give that another little bit more physical demonstration here, I wanna come over to this little branch, which is, again, very much like what I just drew on the board, but here it is in real life. What I've done is I've scaled here where this branch is. So my finger 
is, is, my, or is my imaginary torque vector, right? So if I push downward on the end of this branch, very little effort will allow me to deflect this piece of bamboo a long ways. Very little effort because I, my vector, my force in the downward direction is, is a long way from the point of pivot. Now, if I do the same thing and I bring my force vector over here, I can push the same effort and my deflection is gonna be a lot less. So you can see I'm pulling down a lot more, but it deflects less. And I'll demonstrate that here with this rope. Now, instead of my finger, this rope is a weight. It has, a, you know, it's probably three pounds and a three pounds of force in the downward direction. If I hang it here on the end of the branch, we see that much deflection, right? Now, that is because this is generating torque uh, on, at this distance relative to the pivot point. Now, if I want to reduce the amount of torque on this branch, I can move it in. So as you see, now I move it there. Look, the deflection is less than half of what it was. Not because I changed the weight on the branch, but because I changed where that force is being exerted relative to the pivot point. Now, that all is pretty intuitive. The tricky part, and this is where the real magic of setting up a good canopy anchor comes in, is the other relevant thing. All of the force vectors I've been demonstrating here are straight down because they're based on gravity. If I can redirect my force so that instead of pulling straight down, I'm pulling in line with, so by applying force in compression of, in the direction of the compression of the wood, then I can actually minimize that torque in other ways. For example, here I've got this branch, I've got this rope. Now rope is cool because rope, wherever I pull on this rope, it transfers my vector of force along the line in tension. And even if I redirect this rope, right, if I pull down here with some tension, this is experiencing the same tension. So ropes are good for redirecting the force. As I put this rope right here, now obviously I'm still applying, uh, I'm still applying force down. I'm still gonna use the same object, but I'm gonna put it on this rope here where the force is now redirected because the rope itself is transferring the, the weight of the object along the line of the rope. So I have a force vector right here that is equal to the weight of the rope, and I have a force vector right there that is equal to the weight of the rope. And if you look, the deflection on this branch is almost nothing, and that's because the combined force of both of these vectors uh, creates a, a, what they call it, it's a vector, but the, those two directional uh, vectors combine to create a, a third directional vector that is almost directly in line with the branch. It's actually probably the way you look as you split the difference of this angle. So there's a force vector going this way that is almost in compression. Uh, for example, if you were to think about like a bow and arrow, see there it goes without it. There we go with it. If I draw a bow and arrow, I've got a bow, whoop, and whoop, and then here's my string between here, right? If I pull this back, I am applying a force with my finger that is in this direction. But what's happening is it's creating a torque because my hand right here becomes the pivot point. I'm creating a torque as these two limbs rotate around and I'm, because the string, <laughs> the string as it bends, let's just say we'll bend this bow, we'll bend it really good, and we'll go like that, right? Here's where I'm still pulling, here's where my fulcrum is, I've got a force of tension right here, I've got another force right here, but the direction of the arrow that it's gonna fly when I release it is splitting the difference. It's a, sim there's a, it's a similar concept here, the direction of the final force vector when I release that the direction of this vector between these two points of tension is essentially uh, just a little bit down. As you can see, uh, it sags a little bit when I release it because there's a little bit of a downward direction. But what I did is redirect the force so that I'm not torquing the branch. Now, in this case, I can add quite a bit more weight to this, and it is starting to torque it, but not nearly so bad as when it was just this rope by itself. So as we talk about ways to optimize our canopy anchors, that's primarily what we're referring to. Here we go there, again, so you can see that just hanging there. A lot of torque, long way from the fulcrum, in a direction that's not good for the branch. We're gonna go a little bit more broad scale here. Uh, my brother drew this great picture of a spready canopy tree. When the, the way this comes into play very often is 
we regularly have to deal with branches that are out on the tips of long horizontal limbs, right? And what we have here is the same circumstance as what I just demonstrated over there. And as I demonstrated on the super simplified picture, we have a potential, this is our pivot point. And wherever I climb out on this branch, I am exerting a force downward on the branch. Now, let's just say, oh, the simplest way to trim the end of this tree is to tie a rope, isolate the branch right here, hang the rope right down and climb up it, right? So here we are, we got, got our little guy climbing up the rope right here. So that rope is exerting a directional vector down on the end of that branch, just like me pushing down on the end of that bamboo stick. But the problem is now, all, there's a huge percentage of the weight of this limb that's already out this far. I'm a really long way from the point of pivot. So I'm loading this branch in such a way that I'm not taking advantage of the strength of the branch. I'm not loading it in compression at all. I'm just literally torquing on it in the worst possible way. Now, it's not the worst possible way. You could make it worse by, instead of isolating the branch, you could run the rope to the base and do a nice base anchor. And now this guy's climbing up and we've got uh, a downward vector on this side. We also have a downward vector over here to support the rope. And now we're actually adding more than his weight on the end of that. But We'll get into that more in person. So this is like the worst possible way you could climb that branch. There's a number of ways we can improve it. We can, for example, we can shoot a line up and over the top. So like I've started this blue line here. If I, if I were instead of, instead of to go straight up here, let's just say I used a big shot or a good throw ball and I launched it all the way up and over the canopy. And now this rope is coming through here. And and it's being redirected a whole bunch of times, right? Remember, I'm pulling down here, but what is this branch now doing? Well, the branch is no longer supporting the weight of the rope. The branch is actually just pushing out on the rope just a little bit so that the rope can bend. So what, for example, here's my, here's my redirected rope, right? And here, here's my branch. Uh, instead, of, instead of having to support all the weight, all the branch is doing is pushing out on it just enough to keep it from swinging in because that's where the, the rope is dropping down. So now the branch, instead of being torqued down, it is actually being loaded in compression, just like in our picture over here. And then if you look up through here, this branch is doing the same thing. This branch, well, there's a little bit, because the rope is changing direction more dramatically, there's a little bit more load on that, but not much. Nothing there, nothing there, so, or very little here. So what we've done is we've distributed the, the tension onto the rope through a bunch of small unions, which are plenty strong because none of them, none, not a one of them are putting any, are putting very little force on the rope each, I should say. None of them are being torqued, uh, none of them are being torqued in a direction perpendicular to their longitudinal axis would be one way to say it, but uh, they're not being torqued 90 degrees to their point of support because that's, again, that's the worst possible way. That's that pushing the finger down on the branch. They're being, uh, the force is being applied in line with their compression wood. So that's kind of the very basic over the top uh, overview of what we're talking about with vectors. Hopefully that made a little bit of sense. Again, you think of vector is a force in a direction. A torque is a vector relative a point of pivot. So uh, we're torquing this branch, point of pivot. And to optimize your anchors, you're trying to minimize the torque on whatever branch you're dealing with. That means moving your anchors closer to the trunk, shrinking the distance, reducing the weight, uh, using redirects in such a way that no, none of them are being torqued on. There's a lot of ways that we work that out and some of that we're gonna talk about in the coming days. I've also got a video coming up that shows just how much torque a single climber can put on a branch. We've got a little branch, we've got a, a meter that's gonna measure the force and I'll move my own weight out along the branch and you can see how that actually changes the load at the point of the pivot. It'll change the torque uh, in really dramatic, kind of surprising ways. So stay tuned for that. And hopefully you found this interesting. I know it's a little bit nerdy, uh, but this is, this is the real physics behind what we're doing. This is where the magic is. Obviously, I've, I've only talked about it as it relates to a climber, but the same uh, concepts apply when you're rigging. And in fact, they can apply even more dramatically. Uh, and so hopefully we'll be able to talk about that a little bit here too. I'll give you a really quick little primer about that. There's a video that we all saw on Instagram of a guy who was up a big tree 
He's standing up here. He's blowing a top. Everyone of our smart armchair arborists saw, oh, no, they're pulling on it too hard, right? And so the, the canopy had a, had a rope. Someone on the ground was probably pulling on the top with a, with a, with a truck, right? So they were putting a very strong force in a horizontal direction, perpendicular to the branch. You know, they weren't loading it this way, they were pulling on it horizontally, and the poor guy gets tweaked over and then whipped about. That is essentially just a vertical example of what I'm doing over here with my bamboo branch, except it's standing up. They're deflecting it and then whipping it back. But that's because there was a torque. One of the beauties of good negative rigging is that you push the top off and it's slack, and by the time you go to catch it, it's low. And so the rope is through the pulley or through your safe block or whatever, and by the time it catches it, we're now loading the spar in compression rather than torquing on it in a horizontal direction that's gonna create a lot of movement and a lot of, uh, a lot of potential damage to that trunk. So again, these concepts you'll see appear over and over, and in these videos, I'm gonna talk about them in terms of torque and vectors. So hopefully this is helpful, and uh, we'll catch you there next time. So when we're talking about vectors, uh, a, a important thing to think about is the rope, right? So a rope, we often simplify it in our drawings with just a line, but when you're looking at a rope, the, the, simplistic, the elegant, simplistic beauty of a rope is that when you pull on either one or the other end, uh, the rope transforms the force that is being exerted, the vector, no matter what the direction is, it transforms that force in line with the rope, right? You can't push on a rope, you only ever get tension. So anytime a rope is being pulled, you know the force and the direction based on the, where the rope is pointing, right? So for example, here I've got a guy and he is pulling on a tree trunk with a rope, right? He's pulling this way and the tree is actually pulling against him in the other direction. And because neither of them are moving, the, the tension on this rope is equal to the force that he is pulling, and that's it, right? The rope doesn't move, the force, there's force going all the way across. Now, I'm gonna complicate this ever so slightly here. We're gonna have another little guy, right, down here, and he's pulling this tree over. Ah, well, look, so now we're no longer pulling straight horizontal in one plane, he's actually pulling down, right? So we've got a force in this direction, and the rope is pulling back that direction. Now we know that if he pulls hard enough, he can actually pull this tree over. What he's doing is he's generating a torque on that route relative to this point of pivot, um, and he's generating a torque in th this direction, right? Because we know he can actually pull that tree over. But the, the amount of this vector, the amount of torque, isn't exactly equal to how hard he's pulling because he's not actually pulling 90 degrees to the pivot point, he's pulling at some angle to that pivot point. Now, the closer he is to the tree trunk, the less horizontally he's pulling. And you know that, like you know that you back away from a tree and you're gonna pull harder, it's gonna, it's gonna tip over better. But it's pretty dramatic, that effect. At 45 degrees, it's roughly half. Um, so basically, Half of this energy, this, this is this vector, this is the force vector that he's generating by his pulling. Half of it is pulling this way, the other half is pulling down in line with the tree. And that part going down doesn't help him at all. It's totally wasted. The, that, the tree is super strong in compression. It's, this is doing nothing. And, all, and the only part that is relevant is this part going horizontally. But again, like I said, that horizontal vector is a little bit less than because he's pulling at this angle. This becomes uh, really relevant to our big tree situation where I mentioned you know, we can shoot the line through all the canopy because one of the things you can do is if you've got a whole bunch of little branches, I'm gonna use red here for the branches. So I've got branches here, branches here. I'm gonna make little forks, right? The little forks are just to uh, help understand uh, to, to show here this vector. All right, so if, I, if I've got a guy here and he's pulling on a rope that goes through there and comes over to there and comes over to there, 
and then comes back to the base here and is tied around the base of the trunk. Again, he's pulling straight down. He's pulling straight down with the force equal to his weight, right? And so we know, let's, assuming there's no friction, there is friction, but we'll just ignore that for now because it comes into play, but we don't need it right now. So assuming there was no friction, let's just say these were all perfect pulleys, right? Then down over here, this rope is pulling against the bottom of the tree exactly as much as he's pulling down over here. And it's supporting him, right? Well, what is this branch doing? Well, the branch is actually pushing on the rope outward just enough to deflect the rope away from this imaginary 180 degree line in the direction he's going. So this branch is just pushing the rope out just a little bit so that the tension is then distributed. Now this top up here is doing the same thing. There's this imaginary um, line between these two points and it's pushing up on the rope just enough to deflect it, to bend it. And this one's doing the same thing. It's pushing on the rope just a little bit, just enough to, to bend it. The actual torque on all of these points is almost nothing. It's very, very, very low. You'll have a little bit of torque down on this, and you'll have a little bit of torque down on this, but not much, because for the most part, these branches are just pushing out. Now, that's a, a little bit of an oversimplification, but that's kind of how you can think about it. Uh, we'll demonstrate it, and you kind of saw with the, the bamboo stick, and we'll demonstrate it out in the field a little bit better. But that's essentially is, is a slightly simplified version of what's going on over here in my other, other picture.